auction with his blood. The next day, Fidel Castro declared for the first time that his revolution was socialist. Immediately, he ordered the arrest of at least 20,000 Cubans, identified as opponents to the regime. For the next several hours, he anxiously awaited news. At dawn on April 17th, 1,400 Cuban exiles landed at Bay of Pigs on the Zapata Swamp, a site chosen at the last minute. Fidel personally took over the island's defense. Surrounded by the Cuban army, pounded from the ground and from the air, the exiles stood no chance. Seventy-two hours later, they surrendered. The Bay of Pigs invasion so closely associates uh, opposition to the revolution with the United States that Castro is able to wrap himself in the Cuban flag and declares any kind of opposition to the revolution as treason. And in most countries, treason is punishable by death. That was a very dramatic turning point, a very decisive moment. Castro's credibility, his strength in Cuba and throughout Latin America was enormously enhanced. His revolution at that moment was more consolidated than it had ever been before. He had done what no Latin American leader before him had ever done, and that was to defeat a really significant challenge mounted by the United States. In November 1961, seven months after the failure of the Bay of Pigs, President John Kennedy put his brother, Robert, in charge of a covert operation to get rid of Fidel Castro. Determined to avenge the president's humiliation on the beaches of Cuba, the attorney general would stop at nothing. He engaged hundreds of CIA operatives in economic sabotage and infiltration missions. Old Mafia contacts were dusted off to carry out harebrained assassination schemes. Arsenic in Castro's milkshake, poison in his cigars, thallium powder in his boots to make his beard fall out. There's no question Fidel Castro thinks that the United States will try again after the failure of the Bay of Pigs. He sees the covert programs that are already underway, trying to assassinate him, trying to sabotage the economy. And he expects that the next time the United States will use its own troops, since the exile army was such a failure. On October 14th, photographs by U-2 spy planes revealed that the Soviets were constructing ballistic missile sites in Cuba to house missiles that could reach the United States. Fidel had not wanted the nuclear missiles. The Cuban request was for tanks, surface-to-air missiles, and for some, perhaps some, Soviet soldiers. But once Fidel got them, he saw their value, and he loved the fact that they scared the gringos. For the next 13 days, the world came closer to nuclear war than at any other time. The missiles intended to protect Cuba had only further endangered it, as the island now faced the imminent threat of a U.S. invasion. On October 27th, Castro dictated a letter to Ambassador Alexander Alexiev meant for Nikita Khrushchev. According to Alexeyev's own account, Fidel dictated it 10 times. And at the very end, the letter was still 
red hot. Fidel was basically telling Khrushchev that if the Soviet Union had to use nuclear weapons to defend the socialist world, and if that meant that Cuba might be sacrificed, that's okay. He had concluded that actually he had one of two choices. The choice was for Cuba to be destroyed and for Cuba to be destroyed, but for a reason. And you know, Khrushchev's reaction to this was, that guy's nuts. It sounds like he's telling me to blow up the world. The Soviet government has ordered the dismantling of weapons in Cuba. Yo estoy en mi periódico. I was in my office preparing the Monday paper when I read on the teletype, Khrushchev orders missiles removed from Cuba. I called Fidel and asked him, what do I do with this cable? Because I could not imagine he didn't know it. And for five minutes, we went back and forth until he said, read it to me again. And that's how he found out. Castro called Khrushchev a bastard, an SOB. Enraged, he shattered a huge mirror that hung in his office. He retreated to La Plata, his old guerrilla camp in the Sierra Maestra, to nurse his grievances. Friends remarked on his decline. He was gaunt, his brown eyes larger and darker than ever. He sees that the Soviet Union will treat him in the same way the United States has.